Altian Connection Memories Shamanic Vision Quest of December 20th, 2023 That evening, I went on a shamanic vision quest that was intended to be a healing session for myself in the company of all my high-frequency guidance to bring to consciousness and transmute past traumas that had kept me in a constant state of high cortisol level and PTSD-like state since childhood. It was a powerful healing. I began this vision quest by surrounding myself with my totem animal and my animal allies. They accompanied me to the shamanic tree while all the members of my high-frequency guidance stood guard around the Yggdrasil oak tree. In this vision, I found myself in a dark, metallic-looking room with a diamond-shaped structure floating in the middle. I realized I was a blonde man wearing a white environmental suit, for this see the one worn by Thorhan and Valnek in Elena Denan's book, We Will Never Let You Down, on page 129. I saw myself as the leader of a team exploring this place. Was this blonde man me in a parallel life? Then a bright light appeared in what should have been the ceiling, but was in fact the night sky or space. The light was actually coming from a spaceship that was about to land in this room. As this ship approached us, the light dimmed. Once the ship had landed, grey-white, four-feet-tall beings descended the ramp. They looked very similar to each other, as if they were clones, at least in my impression. Then, in a subsequent scene, I'm lying on an examination table. One of them is standing over me, close to my face, staring at me. He has a pear-shaped face and dark almond-shaped onyx-colored eyes. A bright surgical light comes from behind him. He's watching me, but doesn't seem to be doing me any harm. He has more expression than the others, who looked more like clones to me. I also have a parallel image of a positive Egaroth examining me and smiling benevolently. I think that these visions show me both what appear to be negative abductions and others that are positive. In the first part of the vision, I saw very faintly in filigree the presence of a mantis and a large being resembling some kind of large octopus. The mantis was associated with the memory of being observed on the table, while one or two octopuses would have attacked my team. The positive vision with the smiling Egaroth leads me to believe that I also visited ships of the Council of Zagara to be healed or receives some sort of reharmonization. It's all a bit complex and diffuse, and I don't know if they're screen memories, two different experiences mixed up, mixed up in my mind. I'll have to explore that further, but it was a powerful healing. In the second part of this shamanic vision quest to transmute and heal traumas, I saw myself and Ariel, my twin flame upstairs, as Altians. My Altian energy could be translated into a very light violet color, which inspired me to make a collage entitled Iliandra, and in this vision it seemed to, me to be my name, whereas Ariel, as an Altian, was called Aeronel. I barely saw him and could only associate him with the colors and shapes of my collage entitled Zininen, made of dark blue waves and cherry plum or plum, 
cherry or plum blossom on a red background, which is one of my favorite collages. It's strange that during this vision, Ariel slash Aeronel never had a strong physical presence. Iliandra's, me, Iliandra's presence, on the other hand, was very vivid. A tall, slim woman in a white Altian-like jumpsuit with elements of light purple decorating the front, like Kani's in Yokotsuno comics. See the image here. It is this colored element that has been translated into the collage by the light purple paper I used. The background of the scene was purple-gray, like the stormy sky I had seen in the vision of the sea and beach on my home in the Altian system. See the video of the vision quest of October 13th, 2023. The whole vision was, was a bit opaque, except for the light emanating from Iliandra's body, me, and the jewel she wore on her forehead. Again, this connection as an Altian to the crystal on the forehead, forehead discussed in previous videos. Her eyes were also of a pale violet color, like those of Elora, one of my live, lives as a Nahel from the planet Maya in the man system K62. This pale mauve color is often associated for me with the color of the forget-me-not flower. Iliandra and Aeronel, me and Ariel, as Altians, both guided me to the next vision, reassuring me, everything will be fine. Suddenly, I saw the sea turn blood red. It was nighttime. The water had become sticky from the blood and that made me nervous. My whole solar plexus was tense like in a ball. Then the sea of blood turned into a pool of blood like the reservoirs you find on the steps of the Mayan, Aztec or Teotihuacan pyramids or in Denis Villeneuve's, Villeneuve's film, Dune 1 a place where human sacrifices took place. It was night and I could feel the anguish and terror of the surrounding atmosphere. Then the vision became clearer. I was now lying down as an indigenous Mesoamerican man in the pre-Columbian period. Horizontally, I could see the blue sky with clouds passing overhead. A priest had cut open my chest with a blade of black stone, obsidian or onyx. Although my chest was open, I was still alive. He took my heart in his hand and held it up to the sky. I remember thinking, in quotes, that I should probably be dead. My heart was in his hands, so how come I could still have those thoughts? I believe I thought, in quotes, that because my soul hadn't left my body yet. So I felt it was time to leave my avatar. I suddenly saw the forest, the pyramids, and the landscape from above, as if I were flying above it all. I felt liberated. My solar plexus suddenly relaxed. I felt free at last. Following this vision quest and shamanic healing, I put all my electronic devices on airplane mode and wore shungite around my neck, along with rose quartz and amethyst. I slept calmly in a, calmly in a way I hadn't done for many years. There was no anxiety and no heart pounding at 11 o'clock p.m. in the evening as there had been for years. I think this new calmness was linked to the healing of this memory or trauma associated to this Mesoamerican life. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh.